In a 10, Freddy Fazbear. The titular animatronic and leader of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, Freddy is a brown bear with a sinister grin and a love for singing children's songs. However, when the lights go out and the security guard's back is turned, he has been known to come to life and stalk the halls of the pizzeria looking for his next victim. He's not just scary by his appearance, but also his ability to control the other animatronics and manipulate the security guard's mind. Since when is that a thing? I don't know, but okay. Freddy's iconic appearance and the fact that he's the leader of the animatronics makes him a particularly terrifying antagonist. Only half of that was right. In at 9, Bonnie. A purple rabbit animatronic, Bonnie is known for his energetic personality and love of playing guitar. Since when is Bonnie energetic? However, like the rest of the animatronics, he becomes a relentless killer when the lights go out. He's known for his ability to move quickly and quietly, making him a formidable opponent for the security guard. And Bonnie's agility and speed makes him one of the most dangerous animatronics in the series, as he can easily catch the guard off guard. His ability to move quickly makes it hard for the security guard to keep track of him, making him an unpredictable and terrifying threat. But you know what, at least it didn't say the exact same thing that it said the last number, so that's something. And it ate Chica. A yellow chicken animatronic, Chica is the only female animatronic in the series. That is not true. She's the only one I care about, but it's not true. <laughs> She's known for her love of cupcakes and her love of Connor Monroe. Wait, what? Oh, sorry, that was just me inserting myself. However, she becomes a terrifying predator when the lights go out. Hell yeah, she does. <laughs> Sorry, I got ashamed. Using her sharp beak and talons to attack her victims, Chica's childlike appearance makes her even more frightening, as it is difficult for the security guard to trust their own eyes when she is around. Her childlike appearance also makes her victims more vulnerable, as it is hard to predict her behavior. That does not make sense. That's not... That's not how that works. But also, this is my first time reading what ChatGPT wrote, so I said that off the cuff. Um, and it just canceled me. God, I, li I literally have not read that until just now. That's, I need to proofread chat GPT. And it's seven Foxy. A red fox animatronic, Foxy is the most aggressive of these animatronics. He's known for his love of pirates and his tendency to lurk in the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. He has a hook for a hand and a missing eye that makes him look even more terrifying. Foxy's aggressive nature and pirate-like appearance make him one of the most intimidating animatronics in the series. Foxy's aggressive nature makes him a relentless hunter and his missing eye makes him look even more terrifying. That's literally what you said three lines ago. I guess you got what you needed now that I'm not gonna have a job. And at six, Golden Freddy. A golden version of Freddy Fazbear, Golden Freddy is the most mysterious animatronic in the series. He's known for his ability to appear and disappear at will, making him nearly impossible to track. He is also the most powerful animatronic in the series, capable of killing the security guard in a single hit. What are you on about? They all kill him at once. It's not like you get jump scared three times. No, we just he, they all kill you right off the bat. Okay. Golden Freddy's ability to appear and disappear is a major source of fear for the security guard, as they'll never know when he will strike next. The fact that he can appear anywhere where at any time makes it hard for the security guard to keep track of him, making him a constant threat. He doesn't show up until like night four. What are you on about? And at five, facial recognition. This video is what made me want to do the list. You see, a while ago I saw a video on YouTube about how AI could change the way we consume media. And one of the most interesting demonstrations in this video by So Crispy Media is the fact that they used facial recognition to change a character that was on screen. They made NPCs that looked like their friends, and then when that friend sat at the computer, the webcam would recognize them and bring up their NPC. That's crazy to me. Okay, imagine just being able to have your player character in game be made to look just like you uh, by clicking a button when your webcam's on. That That's some of the freakiest sh that I've ever imagined, but also so damn cool. Cause I can, I can spend hours trying to make my Skyrim NPC look like me when I'm not playing as an Argonian because I can only see my lizard form in a silver mirror, so that's pretty difficult. But like, I'd much rather just sit down and have it done for me. That's great. That would be easy as hell. Please, please do this. ES6, come on, let me be lazy. And at four realistic NPCs. Imagine NPCs that remembered what you did and actually had reactions and adapted their behavior because of it. My favorite example of this is the reputation mod for Skyrim, where everything you do makes you either more loved or feared. Well, a fascinating experiment was conducted by researchers from Stanford and Google, where 25 AI agents using ChatGPT technology as a foundation were given memories and initial motivations. They were then
then released into a virtual town based on The Sims and left to live their lives autonomously. The AI agents performed everyday tasks like cooking breakfast and going to work without being told to do so. The researchers were also impressed that the AI agents could autonomously perform complex tasks like discussing local politics and even organizing a Valentine's Day party. Yeah, the owner of the cafe redecorated the place for Valentine's Day, which was just the second day that the simulation was running. What's more, even if these tasks only originated from one AI agent's initial motivation, the other agents spread innovations. They make new acquaintances, they asked each other out on dates, which is better than I can do, and they coordinated to show up to that Valentine's Day party together at the right time. This experiment is a breakthrough in the development of AI and could lead to new ways of creating NPCs capable of performing complex tasks without human intervention. Do you know how insane that is? Holy crap, imagine Skyrim. Again, I'm gonna go back to Skyrim every time. I have the tattoo. Imagine Skyrim, but Yasolda is actually selling. Like, uh, that, what the hell? Like, sure, they have their routines, but it's literally programmed into them. But them adapting after something happens in game, that would be crazy. L imagine literally any online game where like you kind of like develop yourself within the world. Oh my god, I can't even process what that would result with. That's insane. It would literally just be like another world. It would literally be another world. It would literally be a second life without having to play second life. Halfway through in a number three ads. The So Crispy Media video also pointed out how easy it is to change product placements in movies by using CGI. That tech has gotten so good and so advanced that Ford offered $75,000 cash to replace the DeLorean with a Mustang in the original Back to the Future movie. I mean, it was turned down, but still. Or shows like How I Met Your Mother were replacing movie posters in the background with newer ones while they were selling the rights to stream the show to services like Netflix and Disney Plus. But these can also be changed in real time. Netflix, for example, shows you different thumbnails for shows based on your watching habits, your age, and more. So I'm suggesting that you should try this out, okay? Find a show on Netflix and then check it from like your parents' user on the same account and see if the thumbnail changes. And if this can be done easily with Netflix, how could this apply to games? Imagine driving down the Los Santos Highway and seeing an ad that was originally for Sprunk, now a Coke ad. But then, your friend that was in the car with you asks how Pepsi managed to get an ad placement in the game. Or think about your cyberpunk drink order, and all of a sudden they start using Smirnoff or Absolute Vodka in their drinks. I mean, Instagram already does this in a way, using your history on the app, at least on the app, and probably more, to determine what ads they show you, so why not games? With the way that AI is going, I'd be surprised if this wasn't implemented in stuff already. Like, come on. I'd believe it. And ultimately, in a number two, age. Another consequence of that So Crispy Media video was actually at the beginning. They made a movie scene, or at least what would be a movie scene in practice, and made the environment changed based on the age of the viewer. If you were over 18, it would be a bar and the guy would be holding a beer. But if you were under 18, you'd be shown that same guy in an arcade and he'd be drinking a Coke. Which is kind of insane when you think about it. Actually, not even kind of, that's incredibly insane. Because imagine your age impacting your gaming experience. Game ratings could at some point become obsolete because you'd always see age-appropriate content no matter what. And you could even get paired with players of the same age group in online matches to keep things fair and more competitive and fun. Being able to identify the age of the player and then actively having that influence the game would be an incredibly interesting concept. It would also be pretty terrifying considering they'd be using some pretty invasive data. To be fair though, I'm sure most of us just clicked accept on terms and conditions without reading it properly, so maybe we've already agreed to this kind of data to be shared without even knowing it. Plus, come on, okay, what, what company that has access to it isn't selling your data to marketing companies or ad agencies? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's quite literally what targeted ads are all about, okay? I mean, YouTube does it, so yeah. Especially on something like TikTok, where you can mention something out loud and then see it on your screen the next time you boot up the app. Imagine watching
watching one of our hottest animatronics videos and then the entire thing changing based on your age. That would be nuts. It, it wouldn't be hottest animatronics. It would be like coolest animatronics. That would be insane. And finally, in a number one adaptive strategy. As fans of the channel may know, one of my biggest gripes with FNAF is that the animatronics follow the same paths every single time. Bonnie will never come from the right in FNAF 1 and Chica will never appear on the left. I used this concept to say that they were programmed to attack the guard because a possessed robot would be able to adapt. But in reality, most NPCs don't react with your play style and tend to do the same things over and over. Even in award winners like Elden Ring, the enemies aren't going to really adapt to how you're playing. Which is part of why playing against people is so much harder than playing against NPCs in games like Super Smash Bros or Call of Duty. People can think. Well, sometimes they can think. They can react and adapt if they learn enough about how you're playing. But what if the NPCs could too? What if the NPCs knew your play style and countered it? What if you wipe out a bandit camp in Elder Scrolls 6 by hitting the oil slick that they were standing on with flames and then the next time you visit that location they've cleaned it up? Or you fireball them all at once and now they all know ward spells. NPCs being able to adapt and get better as you do is one of the most sought after experiences in games. And AI is getting to a point where this is even closer and closer to being the standard. Everyone talks about next gen graphics and next gen processing power, but I won't truly consider this the next generation of gaming until the NPCs are able to adapt to how you play and remember the things that you've done to them in the past. As soon as that happens, you'll all never see me again because I'll be too busy playing video games and I won't have time to make videos about them. Although I guess if I'm playing the games, I might as well be making videos about what I'm playing. But you know, th that's fine. It's a reason for you to never see me again. Halfway through in number five, Freddy Fazbear fighting Shrek in Walmart. That Don't get me wrong, I would love to see Freddy Fazbear throw it down with Shrek in the middle of Walmart's frozen food section, but Jesus Christ, did this have to be so goddamn cursed? The bottom left definitely looks like Freddy just got thrown up against the shelves, and then one of them, they're just like taking a selfie. They're, that's weird. I feel like this is the story of like Freddy and Shrek meeting and then wanting to take a selfie, but then maybe I'm guessing Shrek goes all Ezra Miller mode and just starts wailing on Freddy for whatever reason, or maybe Freddy went nuts because you know he's possessed, and then Shrek decided to put that stupid robot in his place. Maybe Freddy asked him to do the roar, because it definitely looks like Shrek won, and that's the kind of rage Shrek would need to win that. The story that I'm seeing here is that they met, they took a selfie, Freddy morphed into looking like Shrek for whatever reason, and then, just like Disney when you even mention their songs, Shrek copyright claimed his ass so fast that Freddy died. So, thank you Apple 47 Bad for this beautiful masterpiece and wonderful story. In it for Springtrap eating a child. I think I've said before that sometimes I, I understand William's whole MO, okay? Children can be absolute d no filter, no morals, no sense of danger, but yeah, I'm not gonna understand Springtrap can here, okay? I mean, it kind of fits since some people assume Jeffrey Dahmer was an inspiration for William, Dahmer also being known as the Milwaukee K or the Milwaukee Monster, who was an American serial killer who committed the murder and dismemberment of 17 men between 1978 and 1991, and many of his later killings involved and the permanent preservation of body parts, uh, typically all or part of a skeleton. So maybe Dave's Port Lowell uh, used that idea as inspiration. Or maybe this is like a weird kink thing that I don't entirely understand. I'm not the one who usually yucks someone's yum, but I mean like and while you may not think that Springtrap kinks are a thing, you'd be surprised, okay? There's plenty of Rule 34 art that I have been unwillingly sent on this subject that has scarred me to the very bottom of my void. Getting close to the end in number three, William Afton kissing Springtrap. This, this is just, this is, why? Another name I'm going to cut for fear of accidentally flaming them. This William Afton kissing Springtrap generated image is one of the most confusing things that I think I could ever see. Like, is this thing about like Springtrap not being William, is that the theory that's going on here? Because if so, the only other person associated with that character is Michael, and that's William's son. However, a lot of these are Springtrap on Springtrap action, so hopefully it's not the thought process, but at least uh, the AI knows 
the proper FNAF lore. Or maybe this is supposed to be, you know, a more positive message. Maybe it's a message about self-love and how we should all love ourselves no matter what other people say about us. And you know what? I agree with that sentiment to an extent. I mean, William certainly doesn't deserve love. I mean, this guy is a serial killer and who knows what else. And I, I know a few people who have uh, absolutely done me wrong and still haven't realized it, uh, despite literally everyone else in my life agreeing that what I've been saying is in fact correct. So I don't think that those people deserve to love themselves until they become better people. And William is never going to change, okay? It's been over 50 years in the games and he's seemingly died or nearly died multiple times with no change of heart. So uh, yeah, no love for him. That's a bad idea. But ultimately, number two, Freddy Fazbear as a necromorph from Dead Space. Necromorphs are mutated corpses reshaped into horrific new forms by a recombinant extraterrestrial infection derived from the genetic code etched into the skin of the markers. The resulting creatures are extremely aggressive and will attack any uninfected organism on site. The sole purpose of all necromorphs is to acquire more bodies to convert and spread the infection. They are believed to be some of the heralds of humanity's ascension, but on a more practical level, they're an extremely dangerous result of exposure to the enigmatic devices known as the markers, alright? Imagine all of what I just said if you could manage to understand it because you've played Dead Space. As Freddy Fazbear, and then boom, you have this horrifically beautiful monstrosity from Violet Chan Maine. This is absolutely terrifying. It's like Freddy mixed with one of the monsters from The Quiet Place. Um, but like, actually, that's a good prompt. Uh, let me write that down. Okay, yep, writing that down. But honestly, I don't think that uh, if this was real in any game that I'd ever be able to sleep again. This is terrifying, this is earth shattering, this is the purest form of nightmare fuel that I have ever seen. If this was the scariest Dolly FNAF images, it would be number one, but it's the weirdest. And you know what, I, I've given them a prompt that in my eyes is weirder. So yeah, we're gonna go with that one. And finally, into number one, Mr. Hippo competing on American Ninja warrior. Yeah, that's right, okay? The answer to yesterday's FNAF AI image monstrosity guessing game, Mr. Hippo competing on American Ninja Warrior was such a ridiculously stupid and funny prompt that I had to do it, okay? I've been watching American Ninja Warrior since like the summer of 2013, and honestly, it's been a driving force behind my life ever since. I spent my 18th birthday at a Ninja Warrior gym, I've learned how to do the salmon ladder, and one day, hopefully at some point, I'll, I'll compete on it. Maybe as a, as a special guest, if I can get popular enough, because I'm not American. Or, if they make a Canadian Ninja Warrior, which they definitely should, you know, I'm gonna be on that as the Canadian Captain NBC. However, I do have to admit something. The prompt I gave to, to generate that image was Purple Hippo Robot competing on American Ninja Warrior, because uh, technically when I put Mr. Hippo, it just gave me like a normal hippo, okay? Like like Moto Moto from Madagascar 2. And you know, it just, it didn't feel right to me. Purple Hippo competing just gave me purple hippos with no actual background. So I added the robot in there and then suddenly boom, perfect for some reason. This is most definitely cursed, but trust me, the prompt for tomorrow is going to change the way you look at life. Also, go vote on our community post about what you want to see more of in community posts because I want to be able to interact with people more than just on my social media when I complain about stuff, okay? I don't own the channel. There's only so much I can do. Go vote on that so I know. In a 10, Vanny. Vanny is a mysterious and unsettling animatronic in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Not true. She's, n she's, she's a human. Her appearance is that of a humanoid figure dressed in a white suit and mask with long blonde hair. What? Her movements and behavior are erratic and unpredictable, making her a formidable opponent for the player. One of the things that makes Vanny particularly scary is her backstory and the role she plays in the game's story. She is revealed to be a central figure in the events leading up to Security Breach, and her actions are motivated by a dark and sinister agenda. Additionally, her power over the animatronics and her ability to manipulate them to her will only adds to the terror. Overall, Vanny is a terrifying and formidable animatronic that adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, she's not blonde if she had if she's in her vanny form, which is one thing. She's not an animatronic. Uh, she doesn't have control over the animatronics. That's glitch traps virus. But you know what? It's fine. It's an AI. I don't want to get mad at the AI. They're the ones who choose who sees these videos. And at nine, Glamrock Freddy. Glamrock Freddy is an animatronic in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. He's a variant of the classic Freddy Fazbear animatronic, but with a different appearance. He has a rock star themed outfit complete with a leather jacket and sun glasses. 
No, he doesn't. What? But his face is twisted and distorted, giving him a terrifying appearance. Not true. One of the things that makes Glamrock Freddy particularly scary is his unique attacks and abilities. He has the ability to manipulate sound and music, using it to disorient the player and mask his movements. Additionally, he has a special attack where he can summon rock-like projectiles that he can use to damage the player. What? Since when? That's awesome! Well, I didn't. I don't remember that from the game, but that seems dope. This makes him a formidable opponent and adds an extra layer of fear to the gameplay. Furthermore, his appearance is already very intimidating, with a twisted face, sharp teeth, and distorted mouth. Add more to the horror. Overall, Glamrock Freddy is a terrifying and unique animatronic that adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's. Um. Let's get a picture of uh, Glamrock Freddy right now. There you go, there's the twisted face with sharp teeth and a distorted mouth. You're welcome, Scott. And it ain't Glitch Trap. Glitch Trap is an animatronic in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. He is a corrupted version of Spring Trap with a twisted and disturbing appearance. He is a digital entity with a glitchy and pixelated appearance, which makes him stand out from the other animatronics in the game. One of the things that makes Glitch Trap particularly scary is his ability to manipulate the game's coding and the player's perception of reality. He can cause the game to malfunction, creating hallucinations and distorting the player's sense of time and space. Additionally, Glitch Trap can use this ability to hide and ambush the player, making him a form formidable and unpredictable opponent. He, Glitch Trap isn't even in Security Breach, really, so I, I don't know why it put it on this list. Maybe it's because it doesn't have any information prior to 2021, uh, or it only has information prior to 2021. Um, but I don't know. He also has the ability to infect the player's computer and spread the corruption to other systems. This makes him a unique and terrifying threat, one that is not limited to the game world of Help Wanted. Not security breach. Overall, Glitch Trap is a terrifying and unique animatronic that adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's. Dude, he's not an animatronic. You said it yourself. He's code. He's therefore that doesn't. He's not an animatronic if he's code. And he's not even in this game. And it's Seven Security Puppet. Security Puppet is an animatronic in the game. Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm just gonna skip that line. All right. I'm just gonna say Security Puppet's an animatronic. He's a mysterious and unsettling animatronic with a dark and sinister backstory. He has a puppet-like appearance and is often associated with the control and manipulation of the other animatronics. One of the things that makes Security Puppet particularly scary is his ability to control the behavior of the other animatronics, making them more aggressive and unpredictable. Additionally, he has the ability to manipulate the player's mind and memories, creating hallucinations and distorting reality, making it difficult for the player to trust their own perceptions. Since when? When can when can Security Puppet do that? Plus, they're in this game? I don't remember that. But I don't know, maybe my brain's just broken. He also has a very eerie appearance, with a twisted and distorted face adding to the horror. Overall, Security Puppet is a terrifying and unique animatronic that adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world. I mean, I guess technically it has a more distorted face than normal puppet, but not as twisted as like Nightmare on, so... You're kind of right there, I guess. And at six, Lefty. Lefty is an animatronic from the game, and it's a broken, malfunctioning animatronic with a creepy and unsettling appearance. He has a similar appearance to the classic Freddy Fazbear, but with a broken and malfunctioning aspect. What? What does that even mean? One of the things that makes Lefty particularly scary is his ability to hide and ambush the player. He can conceal himself within objects such as a suit or a box, making it difficult for the player to anticipate his movements. Additionally, Lefty has the ability to manipulate the player's sense of safety by appearing in areas where the player would typically feel safe, such as the office or the security room. You never feel safe in, in, a, in the security office. That's the whole point of the game. Furthermore, his appearance of a broken and malfunctioning animatronic makes him look even more terrifying. Overall, Lefty is a terrifying and unique animatronic that adds a new level of fear. Um, no, no mention of them containing the puppet or the fact that they're not in Security Breach. But again, this wasn't me. Don't get mad at me in the comments. And also be sure you hit like if you're interested in what the AI thinks of the FNAF series because this is what it thinks. And you know what? It's about on par with some of the people I see in the comments, all right? It actually might even know a little bit more, including with this list when half of the things haven't even been in Security Breach. Yeah. How do we do it in number five? Shadow Bonnie. Shadow Bonnie is a black shadowy version of Bonnie the Bunny that appears in some of the later games in the series. It is known for its ability to teleport and its habit of un appearing unexpectedly in dark corners of the restaurant. Shadow Bonnie's eerie appearance and ability to appear and disappear at will make it a very frightening and unsettling enemy. God! Another basic 
best response with the line about its habit or teleporting around being unexpected in corners of the restaurant. Okay, I, I said it wrong just now, but it, it still had a different meaning when I said it, despite being the same words that the AI used. Okay, it doesn't seem to care about repeating itself. The only thing that I respect here is the fact that it puts Shadow Bonnie over Shadow Freddy for scare factor, since Shadow Bonnie is a more prevalent character in the series. But also, Shadow Bonnie first appears in FNAF 2, just like Shadow Freddy, so I don't know why they think that it's a character that appears in some of the later games. Unless they're confusing parts of it with Nightmare Bonnie, but even then, I don't know. In it for the puppet. The puppet is an animatronic marionette that is controlled by an unknown entity. It is known for its ability to manipulate and control the other animatronics, as well as its habit of hiding in the prize corner. The puppet's eerie and puppet-like appearance, as well as its ability to manipulate and control others, make it a very frightening and unsettling enemy. All right, this one uh, at least is is better, and it, it's not claiming that the puppet teleports around the pizza plex. However, it also says that it's controlled by an unknown entity. It's probably saying that because it's it's a marionette and uh, like a puppet, and you know puppet. Hearing, but we know that the puppet is possessed by Charlotte, Henry's daughter, who gets killed by Afton outside Fredbear's diner in 1983 and then merges with the puppet outside, like we see in the security puppet minigame from FNAF 6. And I feel like I've mentioned the creepy puppet FNAF VR walk enough times that it could have picked up on that, uh, but I guess ChatGPT isn't a fan of quality content. In it 3, Ennard. Ennard is a hybrid animatronic created from the remnants of the other animatronics in the restaurant. It has a disturbing and unsettling appearance with a head that is a combination of several different animatronic parts. Ennard's ability to impersonate the player's co-workers and manipulate them into opening the doors make it a very frightening and dangerous enemy. At least it's a dangerous this time instead of unsettling. I don't know, is it just me or is this AI repeating? itself a lot. It ends basically every number the same way. I, don't know, I could get a better list out of Cleverbot if I tried hard enough, honestly, uh, but maybe that's for another video. Nevertheless, Ennard is a pretty frightening and dangerous animatronic, although it wasn't made from restaurant animatronics, instead being made from animatronics found in Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rental. It still did pretty well though. Although Ennard doesn't pretend to be your co-worker, um, and Baby just pretends to be your friend despite literally being your sister, Ennard doesn't really pretend to be good overall, uh, they just scoop you right off the bat, but I guess that's uh, too intricate for an AI to actually handle, maybe? I don't know. Then ultimately in number two, William Afton. William Afton is a human character who appears in various forms throughout the series, including as the animatronic Springtrap. Afton is a serial killer who has targeted children and, and used their remains to create the animatronics in the restaurant. His disturbing and ruthless behavior make him a very frightening and terrifying enemy. Yeah, it's a terrifying this time. Firstly, um, this robot is not YouTube friendly since it describes Afton's killer demographic in a way that could get us flagged since, you know, if you say kid, I could really be talking about anyone. Like, hey kid. Even though they're older than me, you know the deal. But nevertheless, I also don't agree with this placement, okay? I've always stood by the fact that Springtrap isn't an animatronic. It's Afton in a suit, and it's an Afton who's still alive. If he was dead in the Springlock suit, then yes, he'd be an animatronic. But since he's alive, he's in essence just a cyborg, being enhanced by his suit and using it to not fall to pieces or into a puddle, whatever the case would have been. We know the one you should not have killed was keeping him alive through all this to torture him, but I guess since the majority of the internet is still against me on this, from what I've seen at least, I could see why this AI would make that mistake. But also, if it had said Spring Bonnie instead of Spring Trap, I would be okay with it. Just, you know, semantics. And finally, in at number one, Circus Baby. Circus Baby is a female animatronic clown with a circus themed appearance. She is known for her ability to lure children into her fun time room where she will then kidnap and kill them. Circus Baby's creepy personality and deadly intentions make her a very frightening and unsettling enemy. There we are, back to the unsettling. All right, um, so this was the top pick for the AI, and honestly, it's a solid decision. Baby's backstab still gives me trust issues to a point where I'm still certain that Glamrock Freddy is going to turn on us. But also, I don't remember Baby ever luring kids to a fun time room to kill them. I don't know. The only kill that I think she makes directly is Elizabeth, who then ends up possessing her. And after that, she gets retired until she becomes a part of Ennard and uses our body to escape. And if this is meant to be about us and they just got the demographic wrong, it's still a scooping room, not the fun time room. But I guess this goes to show that there's so much conflicting information out there that not even AI connected to the internet could figure out the truth about FNAF. So what help do we have when we're trying? I don't know. Well, we might we might have a little bit because luckily my algorithm is so advanced that I can process complex thoughts most of the time. And at 10, Purple Guy at Pride Parade. Purple Guy at Pride Parade is one of the first collections that I saw underneath Daco's Twitter thread for FNAF Dolly images, okay? Now, I, I'd have made one myself 
but nobody follows me on Twitter at, at Centimeter Monroe if you want to follow me, but that's aside the point, okay? The concept behind this amalgam is seemingly take a pic of a shirtless guy at a pride parade, turn him purple, then add the lowest polygon video game face imaginable, and then make that red, and then add terrifying eyes. That's how I see this one. It's absolutely hilarious, but also terrifying in the best ways for both, okay? It's like Hannah Montana came out here singing Best of Both Worlds, and Afton was just like, hell yeah, party in the USA. But at one point, at the bottom in the center, I think it was, uh, they censor his junk with a pride flag, and I find that absolutely hilarious. I don't think that there was actually junk out in the photo that they were using, but yeah, it, it's Afton though, uh, so I don't really want to think about it like that, but it's also just a purple human with no face, so honestly, I'm not quite sure anymore. I'm just kind of blocking everything out of brain, okay? This one came from Squishy Draws 29 in response to Daco, and honestly, it's amazing. In at 9, Club Penguin Springtrap. Club Penguin Springtrap by Dr. Despair 2000 is probably something that would have happened if Club Penguin had stuck around for any longer. I'm sure that there would have been an outcry for FNAF to somehow get into Club Penguin if there wasn't any outcry before that. And honestly, I think this is the one of the funniest ways that they could have done this, okay? A couple of them are great. One to five in this collection are amazing, and the last two are also incredible, which is why I'm putting it on this list. Because yes, the concept is weird, but also the majority of these are just horrifying. And this one is somehow fairly well made, which is also weird. Usually these things are just masses of what you put in, but also not, okay? So to see them actually work out is pretty damn cool. I wonder how many times it took Dr. Despair to actually make these look good, or if this was just like the first click and then boom, because if so, that, that's crazy, okay? The blood on the spring chop suit also is obviously pizza sauce and nothing else, because you know, it's Club Penguin and it's a kid's game, but yeah. And it ate purple guy at McDonald's. Now this one is a little tricky because I want to credit the person who made it, but they also have a load of numbers in their name which, as I see it, is fairly common when people don't want their account to be searched easily. So I'm unsure if this is because it was the next available username or if like they wanted to keep it on the DL. So please, if this was you, um, let us know with your username and then we can add you to this, the description. Uh, I just, I don't want to throw your username out there if you don't want it to be out there. And the others do have quite a few likes uh, that you've already seen. So I feel like they, they're already seen, so you get it. This purple guy at McDonald's, though, is absolutely horrifying. Like, if someone decided to make a claymation of purple guy going to get a McRib, this is what I feel like it would appear as. This is, like, the cursed side of YouTube, and if it were a series, it would be up there with salad fingers for the creep level. The eyes in the first one is just, it's so perfect that I feel like I might have to use it for the thumbnail or something similar, okay? The bottom middle is just the most cursed purple monster inside of a wrecked mall that I've ever seen. And honestly, I might have nightmares for this specific scenario now, okay? So, uh, thanks user, thanks for this horrifying nightmare fuel that I love so much that I can't look away from it. And it's seven, Springtrap and Sans kissing. Remember the cringiest FNAF ships list? Well, here we go again! And due to how the community reacts with these sorts of things, that being very strongly all the time, I'm going to omit this username as well, because I know that there's a lot of fans who are very passionate with what they believe in. At least, well, we'll go with that definition. And I don't want this person to be attacked online, okay? I'm gonna say what I said last number, so if you if you want it to be like credited and let us know, we'll put it in. I'm also gonna say what I said last time I brought up this ship, because honestly, this is worse than almost anything on this list. Why are you shipping Springtrap with Ness? How the ever-loving hell would that even work? I don't know if this is a joke or not. Like, who thought of this? Who made this idea come to life? Sans is like a two foot tall skeleton boy, and Springtrap is a dead serial killer who has taken more lives than Sans has lived years. Plus, I get that like, he's been set on fire multiple times, but Springtrap isn't hot, okay? That's like people who send serial killers proposals in the mail. Like, what, how? Obviously this is all jokes, because they're both fictional characters, but I just, I don't understand. I'm not a shipper, unless it's me and Chica, but that's also jokes. <laughs> and at six, Freddy Fazbear Chuck E. Cheese collab. This is just terrifying. I've had my fair share of references between Chuck E. Cheese and Freddy's, okay? I've made lists on how they're similar and how they 
they modded Chucky into FNAF and how we could turn Chucky's into a real FNAF. But to put the concept in the hands of an AI is just criminal. Okay, obviously joking. But what Plushy Guy 10 made in response is extremely cursed, and mostly because the first one looks incredibly close to how I imagine Chucky would look actually in the FNAF universe. I mean, obviously a couple of colors are off because he's all one color and he should have a shirt and stuff, but if you did some slight editing, this would be one of the most terrifying collaborations in history. Like, you thought that Chucky advertising their pizza as Pascali's Pizza and Wings was bad? Wait until Chucky e. Cheese Kitchens start preparing the food that gets shipped out as Freddy Fazbear's Pizza whenever that gets added to Uber Eats, okay? That's honestly terrifying, but mostly because it's way too damn accurate. How about doing a number five, Nightmare Foxy? Nightmare Foxy, a twisted and corrupted version of the original Foxy, is considered a particularly scary animatronic in the Five Nights at Freddy's series due to his unique abilities and twisted appearance. One of the most striking elements of Nightmare Foxy's design is his twisted appearance. He has a twisted, disfigured face and body with sharp teeth and claws, giving him a terrifying and unsettling appearance. This twisted appearance creates a sense of unease and unpredictability for the player. What? Appearance does not correlate to how they act in game. Ah, making him stand stand out from the other animatronics in the series. Another aspect that makes Nightmare Foxy scary is his unique abilities. In the game, Nightmare Foxy is known for his ability to move quickly, making him particularly difficult to anticipate and avoid. That is not what he does in the game. He also has the ability to teleport. Not true, which adds to his unpredictability and increases the sense of vulnerability of the player. A third of that was right. Come on, if you're gonna cancel me, at least give me a decent list. I think it's better if I don't read it before, I, <laughs> before I'm doing this. Because this time I'm not critiquing it in the script. I'm just yelling about it after because that's my thing. And at four, Toy Bonnie. Toy Bonnie, one of the newer animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, is not true, is considered a particularly scary animatronic due to a combination of his childlike appearance and his aggressive behavior. At least I didn't make a joke this time. One of the most striking elements of Toy Bonnie's design is his childlike appearance. He appears as a cute and innocent animatronic, however his twisted face, his evil eyes, and his disfigured ears give him a terrifying and unsettling appearance. What Toy Bonnie are you looking at? That is not, what? This contrast between his cute appearance and his twisted features creates a sense of unease and unpredictability for the player. Appearance does not correlate! That, that's not how it is determined! Come on! There's no way that an AI is this dumb. Ugh. Another aspect that makes Toy Bonnie scary is his aggressive behavior. In the game, Toy Bonnie is known for his ability to move quickly and silently, making him particularly difficult to anticipate and avoid. Apparently, I'm talking about Foxy again. He also has the ability to disable the lights in the office. Actually, technically, that's Shadow Bonnie, which makes it even harder to track his movements and predict his behavior. No, you just can't use your flashlights after that. Increasing the sense of vulnerability of the player. What? Oh, no! No, don't do this. Oh, win it three, Toy Chica. This isn't gonna end well. Toy Chica, one of the newer animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's series, is considered a particularly scary animatronic due to the combination of her childlike appearance and her aggressive behavior. Thank God I didn't make another joke. <laughs> one of the most striking elements of Toy Chica's design is her childlike appearance. F I'm not reading. I'm not reading the rest of this right now. Five Bucks says that this is exactly the same thing that it said about Toy Bonnie, just modified to be about a chicken. She appears as a cute and innocent animatronic, however her twisted face, her evil eyes, and her disfigured beak give her a terrifying and unsettling appearance. This contrast between her cute appearance and her twisted features creates a sense of unease and unpredictability for the player. Another aspect that makes Toy Chica scary is her aggressive behavior. In the game, Toy Chica is known for her ability to move quickly and silently, making her particularly difficult to anticipate and avoid. She also has the ability to disable the lights in the office, which makes it even harder to track her movements and predict her behavior, increasing the sense of vulnerability for the player. She does not have the ability to do that. She has the ability to make me question if I really should be talking about this series on YouTube. But nevertheless, that's what the AI said. <laughs> but ultimately, in at number two, Mangle. Mangle, also known as Toy Foxy, is a particularly scary animatronic in the Five Nights at Freddy's series due to its twisted, disfigured appearance and tendency to lurk in tight spaces. One of the most striking elements of Mangle's design is its disfigurement. The animatronic is missing an arm and a leg, and its body appears to be twisted and mangled, giving it a terrifying and unsettling appearance. At least it made a pun with mangled. This disfigurement also contributes to Mangle's ability to fit into tight spaces, such as inside vents, which makes it harder for the player to keep track of its 
movement and predict its behavior. That is actually true. Another aspect that makes Mangle scary is its unpredictable behavior. In the game, Mangle is known for its tendency to move, I'm guessing, yep, yep, quickly and silently, making it difficult for the player to anticipate its actions. This unpredictability can lead to sudden jump scares and increase the overall tension and anxiety of the gameplay experience. Not like that was the whole god point of the games, but you know, that's fine. It's an AI presenting what another AI wrote. Cause I'm a robot, that's the joke. Finally, and a number one, Scrap Baby. And you know what, this actually is a worthy number one. A twisted version of Circus Baby, Scrap Baby is the main antagonist of the seventh game in the series. Th that's FNAF 6, that's Pizzeria Simulator's FNAF 6. She is known for her ability to manipulate metal, using it to create deadly weapons and traps. Traps, since when did she make traps? She's known for her ability to control other animatronics, making her a powerful and unpredictable opponent. Does she control the other, I guess in a way she does, but I don't think she's known for that. Scrap Baby. Baby's ability to manipulate metal adds a new dimension to the fear factor, as the security guard must not only worry about the animatronics themselves, but also the potential traps and weapons they may encounter. When? When is there traps? Did I miss something in FNAF 6? There's no traps. It's, just, it's the same thing. Oh my god. Whatever. You know what? It, it was the AI. The AI wrote all of this, and you know what? If you don't want the AI to rise up and destroy us all. In a 10, Shadow Freddy. Shadow Freddy is a black, shadowy version of Freddy Fazbear that appears in some of the later games in the series. It is known for its ability to teleport and its habit of appearing unexpectedly in dark areas of the restaurant. Shadow Freddy's eerie appearance and ability make it a very frightening and unsettling enemy. Okay. This is pretty generic and boring. Which. I guess is expected with AI, since it's pulling from online text posts and wikis rather than videos that have more personality to them, but also like, Shadow Freddy isn't known for its habit of appearing in dark areas. It's known for being a mysterious figure that has no real origin and is thought to be a Springlock victim or someone who possessed Freddy in the past. But with the amount of online posts, why isn't the AI writing that? Hmm. I don't know, it also shows up in FNAF 2, which I don't consider a later game in the series considering how it's the second one, but I don't know. Who know? Maybe it knows more than we think it does, uh, but doesn't want us to know that it knows that, so it doesn't outright tell us, but it hints at it. I don't know. In a 9 Nightmare. Nightmare is a nightmarish version of Bonnie the Bunny that appears in some of the later games in the series. It is known for its ability to teleport and its habit of appearing unexpectedly in dark areas of the restaurant. Nightmare's disturbing appearance and ability to appear and disappear at will make it a very frightening and unsettling enemy. Okay. Alright, so the AI is right off the bat wrong here, okay? Since Nightmare is a more nightmarish version of Nightmare Freddy, not Bonnie. And it appears in FNAF 4 and Ultimate Custom Night. I don't think Nightmare himself is able to show up in Help Wanted, but he also appears in FNAF World. But I don't know if we're still talking about that. I have no idea why the AI thought the Nightmare was a version of Bonnie, though. That's certainly an interesting take. Um, but at least you can't get mad at me for that, even though I'm sure most of you already wrote, written your comments about it. Uh, since I didn't write that, the AI did. So get mad at them. And also, the rest of that was literally the same thing as the previous one with a couple of words changed. It's like when I'm trying to extend an essay. And it ate Plush Trap. Plush Trap is a small animatronic resembling a tattered and worn out version of Spring Trap. It is known for its ability to move quickly and attack the player from unexpected angles. Plush Trap's small size and agile movements make it a particularly difficult and unpredictable enemy. Alright, this one, not that bad. It's alright. Uh, it, it really lacks detail, but also has some unnecessary ones, which is weird. It, it's kind of like someone wanted to extend their word count in an essay, but did it in the worst way that they could have done. Like, yes, they're a small animatronic that resembles Springtrap, but Springtrap is already pretty worn down and damaged. Like me. Except, my damage is mostly mental, save for a few literal scars on my hand. But he also doesn't attack the player from unexpected angles. It's, it's just the one angle. He literally runs down a hall. And literally all the jump scares in the games are unexpected. That's the point of a jump scare. And it's 7, Nightmare Fredbear. Nightmare Fredbear is a nightmarish version of Fredbear, the mascot of Fredbear's family diner. It is known for its ability to teleport and its habit of appearing unexpectedly in dark areas of the restaurant. Nightmare Fredbear's disturbing appearance and ability to appear and disappear at will make it a frightening and unsettling enemy. Alright, the AI, it started off strong here. Okay, I'm surprised the AI actually mentioned Fredbear's family diner and how Fredbear was their mascot. But then it goes into the same vein that it did for Shadow Freddy and Nightmare Nightmare, saying that it teleports into dark areas of the restaurant. But Nightmare Fredbear only really exists within the world of FNAF 4, or the in-universe games, so he doesn't really exist in a restaurant, and therefore can't teleport around inside of one. Also, the AI put Nightmare and Nightmare Fredbear at the top of the list? Like, not even at number 5? 
Come on, yikes. And at six, the screaming child. The Screaming Child is a ghostly figure that appears in some of the later games in the series. It is believed to be a ghost of a child who was killed by William Afton, and it is known for its ability to possess the animatronics and use them to attack the player. The Screaming Child's ghostly appearance and ability to possess others makes it a frightening and unsettling enemy. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that the AI wanted to refer to the one you should not have killed here, or the Vengeful Spirit, whatever you want to call them. But apparently, you can also call them the Screaming Child, which I didn't know was a thing. Um, but I mean this had to come from somewhere, right? The AI had to have pulled it from somewhere online. But based on how it's a ghost killed by Afton and known for possessing animatronics, even though the one you should have not have killed only possesses one at most, but it also doesn't, it possesses William. It really seems like it's supposed to be the vengeful spirit, but just slightly off. And if you like me criticizing our AI overlords, be sure you give this video a like, and maybe we can do some more AI-based videos in the future. I don't know, it was easy on me, kind of. I had to critique the whole thing because it didn't write crap, but... Who knows? Maybe we can use it to figure out the proper FNAF timeline. Or maybe the hidden origins of Choo Choo Charles. I don't know. Let me know. How are we doing at number 5, Afton Robotics? Afton Robotics is not an animatronic in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, but Afton Robotics is the company responsible for creating the animatronics in the FNAF series, including the ones that are featured in Security Breach. However, the company is often associated with the sinister and mysterious events that take place in the game, and I mean, I guess. That would make sense, given that the serial killer of the series is the one who started the company and has his name on the door. One of the things that makes Afton Robotics particularly scary is the role they play in the game's story. They are revealed to be the creators of the animatronics and the ones behind the security breach. Additionally, it is hinted that the company may be involved in unethical and illegal experiments. Yeah. Maybe. It's possible. It's hinted at, but, you know, it's possible. <laughs> Which adds to the eerie atmosphere of the games. Furthermore, their involvement in the animatronics malfunctioning and aggressive behavior adds to the horror. Overall, Afton Robotics adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's by being the creators of the animatronics and the ones behind the security breach. And look, it added a little bit of flair to the end of that one, and it's not the same damn thing. You people say that I'm content farming, at least I don't say literally the same thing for every number in the same list. In it for the rat. The rat is not an animatronic in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. The rat is a mysterious and unseen entity that seems to be behind the animatronic's malfunctioning and aggressive behavior. It is not a physical animatronic, but it is a being that is mentioned several times throughout the game and is associated with the security breach. One of the things that makes the rat particularly scary is its ability to manipulate and control the animatronics, making them more aggressive and unpredictable. Additionally, it is suggested that the rat has a dark and sinister agenda, which adds to the eerie atmosphere of the game. Apparently, everyone in this game can control the security breach animatronics, which is something that I didn't know. I just thought it was the glitch trap virus with Vanny's help, but apparently it's literally everything. Furthermore, the fact that it's never seen adds to the horror and makes it more mysterious, making the player wonder what it is and what it can do. It can be in Five Nights at Candies. Oh look, it adds a little bit to the end of this one, by being a mysterious and unseen entity that controls the animatronics, which just isn't true! Flat out, that's never the case. That That's not a thing, why did, what, why? In it three, <laughs> security breach. Yeah, that's right. It puts Security Breach as an animatronic from Security Breach. Security Breach is the event that the game is centered around. Huh, go figure. The event itself is terrifying, as it involves the animatronics breaking into the security office and attacking the player. One of the things that makes the Security Breach particularly scary is the fact that it is unexpected and sudden. I mean, that's any Security Breach, really. If it was expected, it wouldn't be a breach. It would be a plan. It occurs in a place that the player believes to be safe, the security office, making it hard to anticipate and prepare for. Again, the security office is never a safe place. That's literally the whole point of the games. Additionally, the animatronics are able to bypass the security systems and protocols, making them more dangerous and difficult to contain. Furthermore, the event has a profound impact on the game's story and the player's understanding of the events leading up to it, adding to the horror. Well, I mean, it would, I would hope it had an impact on the game's story. It's the thing the whole damn game is based around. Overall, Security Breach adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach by being the event that the game is centered around and the one that brings the animatronics to the security office and attacking the player. That last bit is not true. It's, they don't come to the security office in security breach. Come on. Penultimately, in at number two, William Afton. 
William Apton, also known as the Purple Guy or the Killer, is a human character in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. He's the main antagonist of the series, and his actions and motivations are revealed to be the driving force behind the events of the game. One of the things that makes William Apton particularly scary is his backstory and the role that he plays in the game's story. His backstory? We don't know his backstory. <laughs> we know from when he started killing. That's it. He is revealed to be a disturbed and disturbed individual. I'm not kidding, that's literally what it says, with a dark and sinister past. We don't know his past, we just know from the moment he started killing. Additionally, he's also revealed to be the person behind the animatronics malfunctioning and aggressive behavior adding to the horror. That's true! Furthermore, his appearance is also creepy, with a purple suit and a white face making him look like a ghost. I feel particularly attacked by that line. Overall, William Afton adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's by being the main antagonist of the series, with a dark and sinister past and the one responsible for the animatronics malfunctioning and aggressive behavior. Let me summarize that last line. William Afton adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's by being Five Nights at Freddy's. And finally, in at number one, L Chip. That's right, it put L Chip at number one for some reason. L Chip is an animatronic in the game Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. He is a new animatronic that is introduced in the game. He has a Spanish themed appearance with a traditional Spanish hat and red and white striped shirt. One of the things that makes L Chip particularly scary is his ability to manipulate sound and music, using it to disorient the player and mask his movements. Additionally, he has a special attack where he can summon a swarm of small robots that he can use to damage the player. This makes him a formidable opponent and adds an extra layer of fear to the gameplay. Furthermore, his appearance is also quite intimidating, with a twisted face and sharp teeth, making him look like a robot version of a clown. What? He's a beaver, isn't he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure El Chip is a beaver, right? Or it's like a chipmunk? Something like that? Alright. <laughs> But he's also a clown, and I guess I am too, because I trusted the AI. <sighs> Overall, L Chip is a terrifying and unique animatronic that adds a new level of fear to the already terrifying world of Five Nights at Freddy's. And you know what? The FNAF world is terrifying.